in this lecture we're going to continue talking about various elements of culture. Here specifically we're going to cover values and norms. Now values are abstract concepts that certain kinds of behaviors are good, they're right, they're ethical, they're moral, and therefore they're desirable. So for instance in this graphic we see respect, responsibility, honesty, caring. These are all values that are fairly common in most societies. Now these values can come from a variety of subcultures or social institutions, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And, but a society can have all the values that it wants, but if it doesn't have a way to enforce those values, then they really don't have a lot of meaning. So what we see in different cultures are various forms of social control. And this is the process that people use to maintain order in good life. And there are two main categories of social control, norms and laws. And we're going to look at norms first. So a norm is a standard of behavior. And at some point in time, people in the society agreed that these were going to be the standards of behavior. Now some we learn by being taught, but mostly we pick up just by being exposed to them. So we have that explicit and implicit thing going on here. Now there are a couple types of norms. There are folkways and there are mores. Now folkways are mores that are related kind of to everyday life. So eating with silverware, getting up in the morning and going to work or school, standing in an orderly line. Now there are also mores and these are behaviors that are right or wrong. Murder, wrong. Stealing, wrong. So, and again, I want to reiterate that some of the behaviors are explicitly taught and some are tacit, and we pick them up through observation. So sometimes the mores get codified and they become law or they become binding rules. So stealing as a bad behavior becomes a crime and murder becomes a crime. So how do societies encourage compliance with these norms and laws? Well, there are various systems of rewards and punishments. So for instance, if you kill someone in our society, if you're caught, you can go to trial. If you're found guilty, you can go to prison. You can even be put to death. We've also, as societies, developed specific jobs and organizations that carry out enforcement of laws. So police, court systems, the prison, military. These are official forms of social control enforcement. Now these forms don't necessarily have to be negative. Some can be positive and official. For example, something like a, a Citizen Hero Award would be an example of a positive official form of enforcement. Now there are also, or there is also, informal enforcement and norms and laws. And as with the official ones, there can be both positive and negative. So for instance, giving your child an allowance when completing their chores is an example of positive enforcement. Spanking or time outs are examples of negative enforcement. Some other examples include peer pressure, which can go both ways, negative and positive, religious doctrine, ostracism, which is also another word for shunning, are forms of social enforcement, or excuse me, compliance enforcement. Now there are times when norms and laws are violated and do not result in punishment. Generally speaking, these are very specific set of circumstances have to apply. So for instance, in US society, there are times when you can kill another human being and it won't result in you going to jail if you're caught. So if it's in self-defense, if it's in a time of war. So again, very specific circumstances apply for the negative violations to be put into effect. Now all of these norms and laws can be organized into a set of social institutions. And a social institution is a pattern set of behaviors developed to meet perceived needs. Now this way people aren't doing whatever they want whenever they want to meet their needs. So for instance in U.S culture, we treasure independence, but that independence has to be exercised within the constraints of the social institutions. Now, that's not to say that there aren't people who go outside of these social constraints. They do, and that's this is actually important behavior in an evolutionary sense because it provides variation of behavior. So if something new comes along, we have this big pool of behavior that we can pull from to respond. And it's often those behaviors that are kind of outside of the social constraints. Uh, what is, those are normally where social change can be instigated. Now anthropologists have put these patterns of behavior into some general categories or social institutions. For instance, economic systems. 
uh, religious expression, expressive culture like arts, and social organization, education, are just a few of the different social institutions that human beings have invented. Now the exact pattern or manifestation of the social institution varies from culture to culture and we're going to be looking at several of these social institutions in more detail later on in the quarter. Unfortunately we don't have time in 11 weeks to cover them all but we'll highlight a few of them. As we move through the quarter and read about other cultures, I'd like you to think about the values and norms of your culture. So when you have a reaction, particularly a strong reaction, stop for a minute and think about what are the values and norms and laws in your own culture that are being violated and that are causing this really strong reaction in you. What this does, number one, it helps you understand your own culture a little bit better, but it also helps you learn some skills in understanding other cultures and all of this is going to help you have a deeper understanding of the material that we cover in the course and that is it for values and norms